With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? I call this one a shot in the dark. It was getting on towards supper time when California and I rode into the little town of Spurlock. We'd gone out of our way in order to stop by and say hello to the niece of Jim Reynolds, an old friend of mine in St. Louis. Hey, uh, Hoppy, that must be the place right there. Crawford General Store. Frank Crawford Prop. Uh, ain't that the name of the feller Jim said it mattered great? That's it, California. Looks like a nice store, too. Yeah, a heap better than the store across the street from the look of it. Seems funny a young couple with plenty of money would come out and settle in a place like this, though. Well, according to Jim's letter, Crawford's health isn't too good. He has to be someplace where it's hot and dry. Well, he come to the right place, then. <laughs> But it uh, must be sort of tough and grace, though. This is a far cry from St. Louis. Ah, here's the store. Let's tie up and say hello, then we'll get down to the hotel. Search me, Hoppy, and uh, I hope they get a couple of good beds. Uh. <laughs> I could use a nice, thick steak, too. Yeah, yeah, smothered in onions. <laughs> My mouth's a watering already. Uh, place looks deserted. Oh, there's somebody at the back by the counter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it must be Grace talking to the short feller. Looks like she's been crying. Is there something I can do for you, gentlemen? Uh, you're Grace Crawford, aren't you? Well, yes. <laughs> I'm Hopalong Cassidy, and this is California Carlson. Your Uncle Jim Reynolds is an old friend. Oh, of course. I've heard him speak of you so often. I'm very happy to meet you both. It's a pleasure, ma'am, and you're as pretty as Jim's letter said you was. Thank you. I'm afraid I don't feel very pretty right now. <clears throat> oh, I'm terribly sorry. Mr. Cassidy, Mr. Carlson, this is Judge Bryan, a friend of ours. Welcome to Spurlock, gentlemen. Thanks. It isn't often we meet up with a judge in these parts. Yeah, we've been kind of lucky. Uh, wait, wait, uh, what do I mean? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, I think I understand. But I'm not really a judge anymore. I've gone into private practice again. If you need any legal advice, just call on me. Thanks, we'll do that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be getting back to my office. But, Judge, what about Frank? Oh, if there was something I could do, Grace, but he won't listen to me when he's been drinking. Now, you know that. I know, but I'm worried. Uh, excuse me, Grace, I don't want to butt in, but if there's anything we can do, I'm I... afraid there's nothing anybody can do. Frank has changed so since we came here six months ago. He's taken to drinking and gambling and spending all his time at the saloon down the street. Well, the worst part of it is, isn't it? Well, he's made some enemies. A couple of them would as soon shoot him as look at him. Hmm. What have they got against him? I'm afraid he started out on the wrong foot here, Mr. Cassidy. They resent his being from the East and the fact that he's fairly wealthy. And Frank's done nothing to make them like him. In fact, he's... Now, well, what she's trying to say, Cassidy, is that Frank has deliberately been hard to get along with. He's made it quite clear to everybody that he considers himself above them due to his wealth and family background. Miss Grace! Yes, what is it, Jake? It's Mr. Frank. I'm afraid there's going to be trouble. Oh, Jake, what's the matter? Well, he's in a poker game with Crip Farrell and Big Tom Gorman, Miss Grace, and it looks like they're trying to two-time him. Oh, Judge Bryan, what can we do? Yeah, you've got to get him out of there, quick. Yeah, you better do something or he's going to get killed, sure. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, A Shot in the Dark. Hoppy in California had stopped at the little town of Spurlock to look up Grace Crawford, the niece of an old friend. When they entered the Crawford's general store, they found Grace talking with Judge Bryan and worrying about the actions of her husband. A short time later, a man came in to report that Frank Crawford was in the Silver Sage Saloon and there was bound to be trouble. Yes, we'll have to go easy, man. Frank won't be easy to get out of that saloon. 
men he's playing poker with are mean customers. Just who are they, Judge? Yeah, they'd as soon shoot Frank as look at him. Crip Farrell's a shady character, owns the Silver Sage. And Big Tom Gorman owns the other general store. He's hated Frank ever since he opened his store here. This the place? Yeah, 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 this is it. Come on. Hmm, ain't very crowded. Yeah, that's them. Three men at the table over in the corner. Well, they don't look too friendly toward each other. They won't like our trying to break up their game, either. Uh, if only Frank will listen to reason. Oh, uh, oh, Frank! Yeah? What's on your mind, Judge? Frank, it's, it's Grace. She, well, she, she, she wants to see you. <laughs> your wife wants to see you, Frank. You better run along like a good little boy. Shut up, both of you. You're gonna call it quits and come along, Frank. Look, Judge. I pay you to look after my investments and business affairs, but your job stops there. You don't have to stick your nose into my private life. I'm only trying to help you, Frank. You know that. You're getting on my nerves, Judge. Supposing you haul out of here and let us get on with the game. Yeah, beat it, Brian. How about it, Frank? You coming? No. Can't you see I'm busy? Sure deal, Tom. Uh, pardon me, gentlemen. Mind if I sit in? Cassidy, what not he? Uh, excuse me, Judge. Playing a high stake game, cowboy. That's fine. I think I got enough to go on for a spell. Yeah, but but quiet, Judge. Hoppy knows what he's doing. Let's just look on. Deal, Gorman. You and Farrell are seven thousand into me, and I plan to get it back. I'll see you five hundred and raise you a thousand, Crawford. You're bluffing, Farrell. I can win this pot and be even. I'll call. I'm out. How about you, cowboy? I'm afraid that's a little rich for my blood. I'll fold. Well, just you and me, eh, Crawford? Cards? Uh, two. There you are, and the dealer takes one. Just a minute there, Farrell. Yeah? I saw that. What are you talking about? You slipped about? that card off the bottom of the deck. Hey, you better watch what you're saying, Crawford. Why, you tin horn. You're accusing me of cheating. That's exactly what I'm doing, Crip Farrell. No wonder I've been losing steadily. You're asking for it, Crawford, and now you're... Keep going... your hands right where they are, gentlemen. You stay out of this, cowboy. Yeah, what are you horning in for? This is none of your affair. Maybe I'm making it my affair. I saw him slip that card off of the bottom. He's been cheating all along. That's right, he has. And if you're too stupid not to have noticed it before, you should be home playing tiddlywinks. Wait a minute there. You two had this plan, didn't you? I never set eyes on this man until I walked in a few minutes ago. I just want to see that he gets out of here in one piece. Now take your money and get out of here, Crawford. All right, come on, Frank. Get back to the store. I'm not Grace. taking orders from anybody. Least of all this cowhand. When I want somebody to protect me, I'll hire a bodyguard. California, get his money off the table and give it to him. Right, Hoppy. You won't get away with this. That's my money. Crip's right. He had the high hand. Here you are, Crawford. Now get out and don't come back, Crawford. All right, I'll go. But those two haven't heard the last of this. And neither have you, Crawford. You'd better get clear out of town while you've got a chance, Crawford. You'll never scare me away, either of you. Speaking of getting out of town, that wouldn't be bad advice for you to follow, cowboy. We don't like strangers meddling in our affairs here. Thanks, I'll remember that. Pay no attention to them, Cassidy. You're welcome in Spurlock as long as you want to stay. Well, we just want to get a room at the hotel for the night, Judge. That is, uh, if these gentlemen don't object. Come along, then. I'll show you where it is. And I'm sure they've got a room. You know, Hoppy, that's as fine a steak as I've had in quite a spell. <laughs> <laughs> that sure was. Well, I trust you men are being well taken care of. Oh, did you get a room all right? Yeah, we got one. We're about to make use of it, too. A good night's sleep will do us both good. Yeah, I can well understand. I wonder if you'd do something for Frank Crawford first. That all depends, Judge. What do you mean? Well, I just came from his store, and we've had quite a talk. Frank realizes now that you did him a great favor at the saloon. And, well, he... He'd like to see and apologize. <laughs> he doesn't have to apologize for anything. But I'd be glad to talk to him if he's simmered down. Fine, fine. Well, you'll find him in his office at the rear of his store. All right. Aren't you coming along, though? No, no, no. Frank wanted me to get some things in order for him. So I'll have to get back to my own office. Well, I'll see you tomorrow before you leave, though. All right, Judge. Hmm, must be awful being a lawyer and having to work nights that way. Uh, some people think it's the only life. Come on, let's stop by our room and then uh, go see Crawford. 
Just a second now, and here we are. I, uh, uh, well, I'll be... Uh, I could have swore I locked that door when we went out to eat. <laughs> California, you're getting more absent-minded every day. Well, nobody could steal much from us anyhow. Uh, we weren't gone long. Everything seems to be in order. Oh, don't let it bother you. What are uh, you going to do? Uh, take along your hardware? Sure. <laughs> I don't mind leaving my gun belt here while I eat. But from what I've seen of this town, you never know when a six-gun might come in handy. Better put yours on, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not a bad idea, that. Well, let's go. And this time, lock the door. <laughs> Looks like everybody works for night here. There's a light in Gorman's store across the street, too. Maybe he's trying to figure out a way to improve business. Excuse me, Mr. Grant. Why, oh, sure, Grace. I, I don't mind waiting. Oh, I'm glad you've come, Mr. Cassidy and Mr. Carlson. Glad to, Grace. Is your husband here? Yes, he's back in his office. Go right on back, won't you? All right. I'm so grateful for what you did, Mr. Cassidy. Judge Bryan told me all about it. Frank realizes now I'm that... glad he understands. He didn't seem to appreciate it at the time. I'll go back and see him. Fine. I'll finish waiting on Mr. Grant then. Uh, I'll wait out here with Grace Hoppy. All right. I won't be long. Well, come in, Cassidy. I've been waiting for you. The judge gave me your message. I feel like a fool, Cassidy. I should have known you were trying to keep me from getting into a bad spot. Well, don't let it bother you. It looks like you're playing in rough company. That your dog? Yes, that's Colonel. I have him tied on a rope out back. Sounds like quite a watchdog. <laughs> oh, he's that all right. A one-man dog. Most of the time, he's just barking at cats and other dogs. I'll close the window so he won't... Crawford, look out! <coughs> Crawford! Could you see who it was? <sighs> Hoppy, what happened? It's Crawford. He's been shot. Frank! Frank, speak to me. I... I'm afraid he can't, Grace. Frank's... Oh, no. How'd it happen, Hoppy? Somebody shot him through that open window. I couldn't see who it was. Just saw a gun. Frank. Oh, Frank. California. Look after Grace. Sure, Hoppy. Just a minute, cowboy. Where are you going so fast? Out the back way. I might be able to run the killer down. Hold on a minute. How come your gun was drawn when we came in? Why, I just... Let me see that gun. Look, mister... While we're standing around here, Crawford's murderer is making a getaway. Mr. Grant, are you insinuating that Mr. Cassidy shot my husband? I'm not insinuating anything. But look at this, Mrs. Crawford. <gasps> One of the cartridges has been fired. What? I think I'd better just hold you till the sheriff shows up, cowboy. On suspicion of murder. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, A Shot in the Dark. While Hoppy was talking to Frank Crawford in his office at the rear of the general store, someone fired a shot from outside the open window, and Crawford fell dead with a bullet in the heart. Later, when the sheriff entered and discovered one of the shells in Hoppy's gun had been fired, he placed Hoppy under arrest. On suspicion of murder. Ah, uh, you're making a big mistake, Sheriff. Why are you wasting your time bringing me here? Crawford's murder has gotten away clean. Cassidy, what's this all about? I just saw Grace and your friend Carlson. Sheriff, you've got no reason to lock this man up. Now, shimmer down, Judge. You ought to know all about circumstantial evidence. Yeah, well, does this man look like a murderer? Of course not. Well, he'll sure get a chance to prove he ain't before a jury. I'm taking him to the county seat tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see about that. Leave us alone, Sheriff. I want to talk to Cassidy here. You figuring to act as his lawyer, Judge? If he likes, yes. Well, in that case, I reckon it's all right. But hurry it up. I want to get some sleep tonight. Uh, it's terrible, Cassidy. I'll try and get a writ from the county seat tomorrow. We'll get you released from here. You don't think I killed Crawford, then? Why, of course not. Uh, but what's this about a bullet from your gun having been fired? Yeah, one of them was fired all right. Somebody must have planted an empty shell in my gun while California and I were eating over at the hotel. Yeah. Yeah, this is beginning to add up, Cassidy. What do you mean? Big Tom Gorman lives at the hotel. You think Gorman might have watched for a chance and then got into our room while we were out? Oh, he could have easily enough. 
course, we can't jump to conclusions. Well, Crip Farrell could have done it, too, for that matter. They both had reasons for wanting to see Crawford dead. Well, whoever it was did a clever job of making it look like I'm the guilty man. I know. I know, and it's going to be hard proving you didn't do it. Yeah, but don't worry. We'll get you out of this all right. You just sit tight here, Cassidy. <laughs> doesn't look like there's much else I can do. But if you see California, tell him I want to see him right away, will you? Hoppy. Hoppy, where are you? Uh, uh, huh? Shh. Hoppy, it's me, California. Come over to the window. Oh. Uh. California, what are you doing out there? The sheriff wouldn't let me come in to see you. Well, Hoppy, what are we going to do? I don't know, but I sure don't like being cooped up in here. Have you found out anything? Oh, not much. I looked outside that window for footprints, but there wasn't anything I could see. What about the dog? Oh, him. I found him all right just a couple of blocks from the store. He was half dead. Looked like he'd been hit over the head with a gun butt or something. Had he broken the rope that Crawford had him tied with? Yeah, yeah, he had. Broke it clean in two. Then he must have chased Crawford's murderer. Huh? Gosh, you're right, Hoppy. The murderer is the one that liked to kill him. Looked like there was quite a scuffle there. Well, you... You got any ideas, Hoppy? Uh, a couple. But none of them can do any good as long as I'm cooped up in here. Judge Bryan said he might be able to get you released tomorrow. I know, but if he doesn't... Hoppy, then... uh, I don't like to worry you, but there's something you ought to know. What's that? There's quite a crowd over at the Silver Sage Saloon. Some of them's talking about a lynching. What? Yeah, some of them saying there's enough evidence against you to hang you anyway. If they keep thinking that way, they... They might try it. I gotta get out of here. Yeah, but how? Go get our horses and a couple of strong ropes. This jail's not too solid. Maybe you can pull that window right out, bars and all. That's a good idea, Hoppy. Hurry, California, and don't let anybody see you. Hoppy. Yeah, got the ropes. I got them, but we better hurry. That mob over to the saloon's getting bigger and crazier every minute. Here, tie this to one of them bars. All right. Is the sheriff still out in front? Was when I went by on the way to get the horses. There. There. That's tight. So is mine. I'll give the horses a run at it. Listen. What's that? Sounds like that mob from the saloon. They're out front. Get going, California. I never did like the idea of wearing a hemp necktie. Right, Hoppy. Here goes. Hey, get up there. Good work, California. Hurry, Hoppy. Hurry. I'm coming. Move the window. He's getting away, man. After him. Come on, copper. Follow me, California, this way. Ah, oh, that was close, Hoppy. Yeah, they couldn't follow us in the dark, though. What do we do now? Well, if you were in that mob, what would you expect an escaped prisoner to do? Why, uh, keep right on a running, I reckon. Put as much distance between him and the mob as he could before they sent a batch of posses out after him. Ah, that's just what I figure they'll think. So we're going back into town pronto. Where, where, what? Well, have you gone loco? <laughs> I hope not, California. That's the only thing we can do. We can't keep running, that's sure. <laughs> but what are we going to do once we get back to Spurlock? I don't know exactly. But while they're organizing a posse, it'll give us a chance to check up on a couple of ideas of mine. Are you with me? What are we waiting for? Come on. <laughs> This key's gonna work, Hoppy. Good work, California. Come on in and shut the door. I just hope he don't walk in on us here. Now we gotta hurry. Look through that bureau and any place else they might have been hidden. I'll look through the closets. Right, Hoppy. You got plenty of matches? Ah, I see. Yeah. No, nothing here but clean shirts and stuff. I keep looking. <clears throat> no sign of them, Hoppy. Well, maybe I was wrong. Wait a second. Look here. Well, well, I'll be stuck back in the corner there. Yeah, that's just what we're looking for, too. Come on, we got to get over to Grace Crawford's house. Mr. Cassidy, you shouldn't come here. Jake just came by and said the whole town's down at the saloon. They're organizing posses to search for you. Ah, that's fine. I'll save them the trouble in a minute. 
You mean you're going to give yourself up? Not exactly, but I'm going to try to show your husband's murderer up. You know who it was? I think I do, but proving it may not be so simple. Is there anything I can do to help? Yes, I'd like to see the dog if you'll show me where he is. Why, of course, he's on the back porch. How's he making out by now? Well, he's better, but... Well, come with me and you can see for yourself. I'll bring the lamp. Your husband told me he was sort of a one-man dog. That's right. He wouldn't have anything to do with anybody else. Well, hello, old-timer. Poor thing. He doesn't seem to know what's happened. Tell me, uh, was he mean or vicious with other people? No, not mean or vicious. But, of course, he didn't have much chance to be. Frank kept him tied out back of the store, and nobody would go near him anyway. Do you think he'd come with me for a little while without your being along? I don't know. I, I think so. Why? I think Colonel here might help us prove something. It's worth a try, anyway. He acts like he wants to be friendly, anyhow. Hi there, fella. <laughs> That's a good old boy. Why, I never saw him do that before. He's licking your hand. Can you get up all right, boy? Come on, a boy. He acts as if he wants to go with you, Mr. Cassidy. Uh, here, Hoppy, uh, want to use this leather strap for a leash? Yeah, thanks. Ah, there we are, old-timer. How's that? Hmm, guess that means it's all right, Hoppy. All right, let's get going. Can you see in the window, Hoppy? Yeah, must be 30 or 40 men inside. The sheriff's talking to them. Well, let's get over closer to them bat wing doors. Maybe we can hear what they're saying. Hang on to that leash, California. I got it. Good boy, Colonel. Listen. Okay, Sheriff, we're ready. Gorman, you and Farrell can take some men down towards Apache Creek. They might have headed that way direction. If they did, we'll get them. Ah, we can save you the trouble, Sheriff. That's it. Get them. Watch it, Gorman. They've got guns. Stay where you are, all of you, and keep your hands in sight. You better give yourself up, Cassidy. You can't get away this time. I'm not figuring to get away, Sheriff. Frank Crawford's murder is in this mob, and I'm going to prove it. What are you driving at? Whoever shot Crawford almost killed his dog, too, after the dog broke loose and chased him. Unless I miss my guess, the dog can show us who that man is. That's ridiculous, Sheriff. Come on, let's get him. That's just a stall. That's all it is. Just a minute. Cassidy may have an idea here. He can't prove anything with that dog. I'm afraid you're going about things in the wrong way, Cassidy. It's worth a try, Judge. You still think it was either Gorman or Farrell that killed Crawford? Why, well, well yes, but... Uh, Why, uh, you are... All right, Gorman. Suppose you come up here and pet the dog. Come on, get a move on. Well, all right, but... Hmm. Nice dog. Good dog. There. All right, you're next, Farrell. I don't like dogs. Why should I... Get moving. That's a good fella. Good boy. Yeah. You don't seem to be proven much, Cassidy. Maybe I'd better consult my lawyer, Sheriff. Come here a minute, Judge. Well, what do you want, Cassidy? I ceased being your lawyer when you broke out of jail. I said come here. Now. <coughs> well, I... Hold on. Hold on. Don't let go of that leash. Well, he doesn't seem to take to you, does he, Judge? I don't know whether I can hold him or not. Hold him. What's the judge? He's going for his gun. Drop it, Judge. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Well, the judge is locked up safe, Cassidy. And you were right. One of his legs was tore up where that dog had bit him. That varmint had a right clever scheme worked out to get rid of Crawford and put the blame everywhere but on himself. Yeah, and he had more motive than either Gorman or Farrell for killing Crawford. Now, I declare I never would have thought the judge was an embezzler. But I suppose handling all of Crawford's investments was just too much temptation. How'd you get wise to that, though, Cassidy? <laughs> well, I didn't think of that until I was practically sure he'd shot Crawford. I first suspected them the night after the shooting when he came to the jail to visit me. You see, Sheriff, he told Hoppy and me he was going to his office to do some work that night, just before the shooting. Yeah, but what's that got to do with it? Well, I knew Crawford's dog had broken loose and chased somebody. And when the judge came to see me, I noticed he'd changed his pants. I got to thinking it was sort of strange for a man to get into a new pair of pants just to work in at night. <laughs> and when we looked through the judge's house, sure enough... There was the old pair, the dog had torn in his closet. Well, I declare. 
Well, I'm glad the whole thing's settled. And, oh, I'm sorry about all the trouble you got into. <laughs> I'm afraid I owe you both an apology. <laughs> I'm willing to call it even if you are, Sheriff. Call it even? Yeah. You owe us an apology, and we owe you a jail window. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the judge was really up against it when he tangled with both Hoppy and a loyal one-man dog in his scheme to solve his money troubles with a shot in the dark. Hoppy and California reluctantly part company with $10,000 in gold when they walk into a bank run by bandits and gunfighters in a town turned inside out for a gunhawk convention. Don't miss this next thrilling adventure. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. A Shot in the Dark was written by R.T. Smith with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>